video tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to take an LP and solve it using the simplex method. We're going to utilize the spreadsheet that Professor Sharkey posted on LMS in order to aid us with the calculations and focus on types that we want to see in the process of going through the simplex method. So here I have an LP. I notice it's a maximization problem. I have two variables and three constraints. And I have inequality constraints and then non-negative variables. For the simplex method, there's a standard that we need to start with. And one of that is I need equality constraints. So the first thing that we need to do with this LP is make sure I have equality constraints. So to do that, I'm going to form an augmented LP. To do that, I can keep my objective function exactly the same. However, I need to change each of these constraints. So here I had that negative 2x1 plus x3 is less than or equal to 2. So I could have feasible solutions for x1 and x2 where in this constraint they evaluate to 1, they could evaluate to 0, they could evaluate less than 0. But I want to force it to equal exactly 2. So to do that I add in this fake variable or what we would call a slack variable to make this equal. So if this evaluated to negative 1, this value would be positive at 3 to make it an equality constraint. So I'm just adding in this fake variable, slack variable. And I do it for my other constraints as well. So here again I have inequality and I'm going to add x4 and make this an equality constraint. And I'm going to do the same thing for the last one, add in plus x, x5 and make this an equality constraint. I carry over non-negativity, but now I have to enforce non-negativity on my other three variables that I've just added. So for x3, x4, and x5. And so here's my augmented LP. I notice it's still a maximization problem. Now I have five variables, three constraints, but equality con constraints. So this is what I want to then plug it into simplex. So utilizing the spreadsheet that Professor Sharkey had, um, I've taken it, the only difference here, I've added some borders to try to make it clear of where you're gonna look. And I've added this solution row, but we'll talk about that. You won't need it, but it's just a way for you to see how to take from the tableau what the actual solution values are for these variables. So we need to take this LP and plug it into the tabular form. So here I have max. I'm then going to take the objective function, which is 3x1 plus x2. So this just says, yes, this is the objective function row. The rest are 0. And then this was 3x1. I'm going to take the negative of it because I'm essentially saying z minus x1 is equal to this value. So I have three, minus 3 for x1 and minus 1 for x2, and the rest were not, did not show up in the objective function, so I'm going to put 0. I'm going to do the same thing for the constraint. So I have negative 2, 1, 1, and then 0, 0, 2. So negative 2, 1, 1, 0, 0, 2. Do the same thing for my other constraint, 1, 2, 0, 1, 0, 6, 1, 2, 0, 1, 0, 6. And then same thing for the last constraint, so x1 and x5 and then it's 4. I also need to add in my this is where your objective function value is stored. I need to add in a zero for that. And so this is my tableau of data that I've put in. And with this, I need to have a feasible starting solution. Um, so I need to take values for these variables in order to have all of these constraints actually satisfied. 
And so one thing we know with a basic feasible solution, our starting solution, is I have three constraints, therefore I'm going to have three basic variables and two non-basic variables. The two non-basic variables are zero. The three basic variables can be zero but are often greater than zero. <clears throat> and so with this I see if I take x1 and x2 equal to zero and my x3, x4, and x5 just strictly equal to the constraint that they're in. So you see x3 is associated with this constraint, x4 is only in this constraint, and same with x5 for the last constraint. It's easy to set just these values as your basic variables and equal to the right hand side here. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm taking here, this x3 has a 1 here, it's only apparent in this constraint, and I'm saying it's a basic variable for that constraint. And you'll notice I put x3 here and x3's value is now equal to its right hand side for that constraint. I'm going to do the same thing with x4 and x5. So by adding these slack variables, it's nice to have a very clear starting solution. We'll note, I'll give another tutorial about the two-phase method, where if you don't have the extra slack variables, how do you get a starting solution? And that's what phase one of the two-phase method does. It just gets you to a starting solution. But here we have a starting feasible solution, and we need to ask ourselves, is this an optimal solution? And so we remember we have a maximization problem, and so we look at the reduced costs. The reduced costs are these, these values up here in the objective function row associated with the different variables. So if I'm in a maximization problem and I have any negative reduced costs, then I am not optimal. If I was in a minimization problem and I had positive reduced costs, then I'm not optimal. So here I see that negative 3 and negative 1, that means I'm not optimal. I'm going to take the greatest 1, so negative 3. This is essentially saying I want to increase x3 to get a better objective function value. But now I have to answer how far do I increase. And that's what the min ratio test does. And so to fill in the values here for the min ratio test, you just take equal, so I only look at the values that are positive and non-zero. So no negative and no zero values. So here I'm going to ignore negative 2, so I'm not going to do a min ratio test for that. But for 1, I am going to do a min ratio test. I do equal 6 divided by 1, and here equal 4 divided by 1. So essentially I'm just taking the right hand side divided by the coefficient for the value or the variable that I am increasing. And so what we think about here, if we look back to our constraints, what does this actually mean. I am, so if we look at this second constraint, I know for my current solution I have 0 for x1, 0 for x2, and this is 6. I say I want to increase x1, and I want to increase it as much as I possibly can. And so if I increased x1, what value can I do it? So if I increased it to 6, this is 0, this could then be 0, and I would have a, this constraint would be feasible. If I increased it to 7, this is 0, this would have to be negative 1 in order for this constraint to be feasible, but that violates my non-negativity. So essentially it's saying that the maximum value to keep this constraint valid is 6 for x1. And then the same thing, I do it for this constraint. For this constraint currently, I have this at 0 and this at 4. I want to increase x1 as much as possible. So if I increased it to 4, I could have 4 and 0 and this be valid. But if I increase this to 5, I would have to have 5 and negative 1, therefore it's not valid. So you see here, this is essentially the bounds on how far I can increase x1. And so I can increase it to the minimum of the positive values. So if I increased it to 6 here, I couldn't get a feasible constraint there. So I therefore can only increase it to 4. That means that I'm increasing x1 to 4 and x5 will then be driven to 0. So if we look at this constraint, if I increase this to 4, this will be driven to 0 to make this constraint equal to 4. So I automatically know here I'm switching x5 for x1. 
the other two constraints I'm only I'm doing a step by step I'm only switching at one point uh, so I'm one variable is entering the basis so x1 is entering here and x5 is leaving so it's only one at a time and now I need to have um, so this is essentially saying that this row here is my pivot row so I'm gonna answer here 11 is my pivot row and then in this column I just have to say is this your pivot row 0 or 1 and here 11 is my pivot row at 1 and now I need to pivot I need to do Gaussian elimination uh, which we'll walk through um, in order to make this tableau correct and so what did we notice about before here are basic variables x3 x4 x5 so for x3 we had one and then all zeros one and all zeros one and all zeros so now I know x1 is my new basic variable so down here I want it to be a one and all zeros to essentially look like the column of the variable that it's replacing so x1 column should look like it's x5 so here I need to multiply this row times something in this row which is this coefficient to make this a zero so essentially I am multiplying this by a three so what it's taking it's taking x1 plus three times this value and making it a zero and it's doing it for the whole row but what I care about is this zero because I'm entering x1 I do it for the rest of the uh, constraints so here negative 2 plus 2 times 1 0 uh, here I want this to be a negative 1 so I'm taking 1 plus negative 1 times 1 to be a 0 and here I already have a 1 so I'm just going to multiply it by itself and so that is one iteration of simplex and so here, let's look at our tableau, gut check to make sure we did some good calculations. Here was our objective function value. We're trying to maximize and we're changing our variables so that we're increasing the objective function value. So it went from zero to 12. Looks like we're on the right track. Uh, do we have three basic variables? We say it's x1, x3, and x4. So x1, do I have one, all zeros? Yes x3 1 all zeros yes x4 same thing I have two non basic variables which means that their solution values are 0 and the rest equal their right hand side so here if I take this x1 value up and it equals its right hand side and you can see the same for 10 and 2 and so I have my new tableau and I need to answer is this solution optimal Again, we're maximizing, so if I have negative reduced costs, then it's not optimal. Here I see that x2 has negative reduced costs, which means if I increase the value of x2, I would get a better objective function value. So I want to increase x2, which means I have to decrease some other uh, value to zero and make that variable non-basic. So here I'm going to increase x2 and do my min ratio test. So here, again, I'm taking the right-hand side divided by the column for my min ratio test. So 2 divided by 2 here. And because I have a 0 value here, I don't have to do the min ratio test. Here I notice that the most, the minimum value here is 1, meaning the most I can increase x2 by is 1. Therefore, making this row my pivot row, so 18 in Excel. And I answer here 0, 0, 1, 0. And here by increasing x2, I know I'm decreasing x4. Therefore, x2 is replacing it in the basis. But my other vari basic variables are staying the same. So here I just changed x4 to x2 because I'm increasing x2, decreasing x4 to 0. Now I have to decide what am I multiplying this by to get this as one and the rest zeros? And so here, I'm gonna multiply this by one half. You'll notice that it's just the negative of this coefficient divided by the coefficient of the pivot row. So negative one times one, negative one times negative one, one divided by two. 
Here, I'm going to take the negative of this coefficient divided by the pivot row of that coefficient. Here, I'm just dividing by itself. Uh, no, equals 1 divided by itself, I mean. And this is already 0, so therefore I'm going to 0 out. So I pick these coefficients so that I can get values of 1 and all 0. 1 in the row where it appears and the rest 0. So you can play with these values in order to get that correct form. And so now I have my new tableau here. And I have to, again, ask myself, am I optimal? And I'll notice, oh, again, we can, well, gut check first. Did I increase my objective function value? Yes, I went from 12 to 13. Do I have three basic variables? x1, here I have 1, 0, x2, 1, 0, x3, 1, 0. Their values here equal their right-hand side, and then I have two non-basic variables that are 0. Then I ask myself, is this solution optimal? I look at my reduced costs and I see that they're all positive and uh, or non-negative and therefore I know that this is the optimal solution or one optimal solution and therefore these x values equal to this solution is what will maximize my objective. So that concludes the third video tutorial. Hopefully it uh, came out a little less blurry than the previous one I tried to zoom in but uh, feedback is always appreciated um, just letting logistically know or how helpful it was and you can also request tutorials on the website the next tutorial like I mentioned will be going through the phase one phase two approach uh, to solve an LP thanks